Hey guys and welcome back to another Unreal Engine 5 tutorial. In today's video I'm going to be again advancing upon my previous tutorial with something which I said I'd do and that is a respawn system. So this means the player can now actually die using our system we created last time and when they die they will also respawn. So let me hit play and show you what we're going to make today. So previously we've created the health bar and we've created a system in which we can take damage and we can also heal as well like so. And now once we take enough damage what's going to happen is the player is going to actually die and they will then also respawn no! so we've died a second later we're going to respawn like so so you saw after a second we then respawned here like this and with this system you can also set another respawn point so if i come over here press 5 as that's just what i've got it set up as for the purpose of the tutorial and then we were to die again our respawn point should now be set over there no! and so that is where we will respawn as you can see here and it also keeps the rotation as well as the location and that's very easy to customize and set up so it could be a checkpoint you walk into something and it then sets your spawn point there very easy to set up and advance upon and this is what we're going to be going over and creating today so without further ado let me delete this code no! and i'll show you how i've done it so the first thing we want to do is we want to actually open up our game mode blueprint so we're going to go to control space to open up our content browser third person blueprints and bp third person game mode now if you have your own custom game mode which you're using feel free to do it in there just essentially do this in your game mode blueprint and once we're in here we're going to right click and add a custom event naming this one respawn player in this respawn player what we're going to do is add an input with this being named player so we know which player we want to respawn and the object reference for this or the variable type sorry is going to be a character object reference like so out of the execution pin of this custom event we're going to get spawn actor from class and now this class wants to be our character but how do we get an actor class from a character object reference what we can do is drag out a player and get class very simply like so and then just put the return value of that into the spawn actor like so it's that simple then we just need to define where we want to spawn the player so we can right click on spawn transform promote it to a variable and I'm just going to name this respawn transform instead of spawn transform and Bob's your uncle it's that simple we can now compile and save this and that is now going to respawn the player however there's one extra step we need to do in here because this will respawn the player however it won't give control over to the player so to do that we can right click get player controller like so and out of the totality of this get a possess node connecting that into the spawn actor and the return value of the spawn actor is the in pawn of the possess there. So now we're going to be respawning the player which we define at the defined location and then we're going to be possessing it so we can also control it. It's that simple. So we can compile and save that. Now what we need to do is call this event, input the player and also input a spawn transform there. So we're going to close the game mode and open up our character blueprint. So again I'm going to hit, hit control space and open up BP third person character here like so. Now what we want to do in here is go over to the functions tab under my blueprint here and we're going to override the destroyed function. So when the player dies we're going to do destroy actor as you normally would and so we're now going to override what that destroyed actor function does. So what we want to do is we want to cast to the third person game mode or the game mode blueprint you just used the object is obviously going to be get game mode very simply like so and all we want to do out of this is as third person game mode we're going to respawn player very simply and this player input we have here wants to just be get a reference to self so it is this current player that we want to be respawning and the reason we've done it like this is this then means you can use multiple players or multiple blueprints whatever you can have it unique to each individual character so we can compile and save this because that obviously just means you don't have to cast to individual characters in the game mode you do it like this it's a lot more efficient so that's now going to respawn the player all we need to do is actually kill them now so if we go over to our damage system here if you followed on from my previous tutorial you should already have this and obviously if the health is equal to zero that's true they're going to die all I want to do now is destroy actor like so let me straighten that up and that is now going to destroy the actor which will call this function override we've just set up 
down here to then respawn the player. One final thing we need to do is set the spawn point. I'm going to do that off of event begin play. So what I'm going to do is cast to my third person game mode once again, with the object being get game mode, like so. And then as BP third person game mode, I'm going to set respawn transform or respawn point, whatever you named it. And the respawn transform is just going to be get active transform. So when the player spawns into the level, where are they currently? What's their current rotation? And what's their current scale? That is then going to be where and how they have respawned later on. And if you want to set this up on a checkpoint system, you would just do this code here that is selected inside of that checkpoint. So when they overlap a box collision, for example, you just do this. Cast third person game mode, set the respawn transform to the current axis transform of the player. Very, very simple. So again, what I'm going to do is just get the five keyboard event, plug that into there, just so I can test this out to make sure it works in other locations as well. So if we compile, save, and hit play, we should be able to test this out and see it working. So let's just walk over here, stand on top of here and face this direction, hit five, my respawn point should now be set there. If I were to come over here and just die to this box, we should see that the player will die, the axe will be destroyed, and I will then be spawned over there. Very simply, no! like so. And you'll see that was instantaneous, there was no delay on that. If you want to delay, what we can do is go back into our game mode blueprint, and after the respawn player, before the spawn actor, we can just get a delay, and in here you can put any duration you like, for example, two seconds. So let's test that out again. Let's walk over here, press five. Let's die over here. We should spawn there after two seconds of dying. No! As you can see here, like so. So this works perfectly. So I think that'll be it for this video as we've done everything we want to do. What we've done is we've set up a system in which using our damaging and healing system from no! last time, the player can now actually die. And after they do die, they will respawn in a place which we have to find by pressing any button we want or using a checkpoint system however you've got it set up. So thanks so much for watching this video, I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you found it helpful, and if you did, make sure to like and subscribe down below. So thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.